Hello, game theorists. So, we're looking at the most recent in-class game that we played. So you saw this on your instructions and answer sheet. Some of you guys were player ones, and some of you guys were player twos. So player one starts out with 10 tokens. They can then decide to pass some of them to player two. If they choose to do that, there is a multiplier. So we're saying here, if team one passes four tokens, then player two is gonna get 12 tokens. So that's multiplied by three. So team two then can decide if they want to pass some tokens back to team one. Now, in the second pass here, there is no multiplier. So it's saying if player two decides to pass back four tokens, then player one gets four tokens from them. So this game can be solved using rollback. And we'll first look at the simplifying assumption that teams care only about how many tokens they get. So and if they only care about tokens, then player two at the end of the game might as well just keep all their tokens. There's no benefit to them in passing tokens back to player one. So team two is not gonna pass anything back. If team one realizes this, that they're not gonna get anything in return from team two, then team one might as well just not pass anything in the first place. So if the players only care about tokens, then team one passes nothing and team two would also pass nothing. Now, the interesting part of this game though, is that in the real world, people don't care solely about tokens. They don't care solely about money. This game is actually called the trust game. And here's why. So the only reason for player one to pass some tokens on to player two is if they trust them. They trust player two to reciprocate and pass some tokens back. So I figure if I pass you four tokens, I've given you 12 effectively because of that multiplier, maybe you'll share, I don't know, five or six of that 12 back with us and we'll both be better off. That's only gonna happen if player one trusts player two. So that's why it's called the trust game. So you could even have a case where you pass all 10 of your tokens in round one, and then a player two will get 30 because of that multiplier of three. 10 times three is 30. So player two would get 30 tokens, and they might share half of those with player one. That would probably be what you would call the most cooperative possible outcome. <coughs> so, what did you guys do in this game? So I've played this game with the classes in several of the previous semesters. What I've noticed is that my students are pretty cooperative at the beginning of the semester, but that gradually decays as the semester goes on. We traditionally play this game at the very end of the semester, and by then, cooperation has almost entirely evaporated. So for this semester, I thought I'd try playing a game closer to the middle before that cooperation has entirely decayed. I thought I might get different results this time. Though the twist is that this is the first time the class has been fully online from day one. We saw last time that um, we saw at the, um, the midterm one extra credit game that you guys were less cooperative there than my traditional face-to-face -face classes have been. So something about the online format, it being less personal, you don't know your classmates very well, seems to have caused less cooperation. So even though this game is played in the middle of semester rather than the end of the semester because of that less personal connection of being an online class, you guys are still pretty uncooperative. So. I'll pull up the spreadsheet here with the results. 
So Team 2 always passed zero tokens back to Team 1. And that happened regardless of how many tokens Team 1 wanted to pass. And there, there replies just a uniform set of zeros for Team 2. So my Team 2s were completely uncooperative. My Team 1s were partially cooperative. So you see here, actually, um, the Lakers passed all 10 tokens and Breakout Room 7 also passed all 10 of their tokens. Breakout Room 1 passed nothing and Group 5 passed only three. So substantially less cooperation than I'd usually see, I think, in um, a face-to-face -face class. I played the game earlier in the semester. So some of the groups took a chance hoping that Team 2 would pass some tokens back to them, but as we saw, Team 2 was uniformly uncooperative, so that didn't work out very well. So those were our results. Now, it's not irrational to pass tokens back if you're Team 2. If you value cooperation, if your utility, if your payout depends upon cooperation and not just tokens, then yeah, it could make sense. But at this point, we seem to have gotten to the point in the class where we just care about tokens. We're not valuing cooperation very much anymore because of the less personal nature of the online course. So that wraps up our in-class game. Be sure to join us again for our next in-class game, which we'll announce shortly.